Hi and welcome back to today's stream and the topic for today as usual we're still gonna work on our Airbnb clone using Vulkan.js but we're gonna start working on an um, Nbit dashboard so just a simple way to show all our bookings, uh, reviews and uh, rooms Although before we do that, we need to finish up this uh, filter stuff I was working on yesterday. So um, to recap, yesterday I was trying to toggle these filters on and off and have that reflected in the URL. And the way I did it first is um, every filter would add um, a new parameter. So like shampoo equals one, then uh, iron equals one, internet equals one. But that wasn't super uh, convenient because then you have all these different uh, properties in the U URL query string and it's hard to pass them on to, to do something with them. So instead, I tweaked it so that it just adds uh, filters equals x, y, z. And that in turn... Um, so let, let me show you how it works. Um, I actually stopped using the local component state. I'm only using the URL, which, you know, the, there's advantages and downsides. The adv advantage is um, it's in the URL, so if I close the tab and I reopen it, uh, the state will be preserved. Now, I've been also thinking I should do the same with uh, the bounds for the map. Um, to Because right now, so let's see, if I the zoom but without changing the the center yeah it will not preserve uh, the de zooming so so that's something we might want to improve like uh, preserve the zoom level and the bounds of the map so storing both in the URL um, I'm not sure like from a UX point of view if it's neither or not to be honest so let's let's leave it like this for now but yeah the the filters, the toggles are working. Uh, I can walk you through the, the logic really quickly. Uh, whenever a filter is toggled, we get all the current filters in the URL. If the URL contains the filter, we remove it. If it doesn't contain it, we push it. Then we take our uh, query uh, object, the query object in the URL, we remove uh, the filters property because we want to replace it um, by the new one and so we we can't just do like query.filters equals filters because what we want to do is not uh, modify the query itself that wouldn't do anything uh, we want to call replace um, to go to a new URL so replace is just like push except it doesn't change the history meaning that if I do this five times it won't create five new history states in here and then yeah how do we create a new URL well we, we encode the query uh, which doesn't contain the filter and then we encode the filters object that we built so uh, I needed to figure out like the exact syntax for that but overall the logic isn't too bad now, because we are using the URL and not the local state, uh, the URL is available globally, so we can um, access it here. No, wait, not here. Here, yeah. And when we want to pass our filters to our uh, resolver, we can simply pass it like this, access it on uh, this props location, which comes from with router. So this is a an illustration of using the URL as a global uh, state store, something which you would typ typically use Redux for, but in this case the URL works well because we want to preserve that data. Uh, you know, if somebody closes the tab by mistake or bookmarks a set of results and so on. And now that we are doing this, we can go check the, um, the resolver here and you can see that we are passing the filters just as we want to. Now, I'm not actually doing anything with those filters yet, so that might be the next step. Um, so not components, but uh, modules, resolvers. 
Okay. And by the way, if you're watching this, uh, come say hello in the chat room. Just uh, drop me a message. Okay. So. And by the way, uh, Vulcan actually has some um, pre-made APIs to do this. So um, if I can find them. Um, so I'm thinking about views, which might not be which might not be documented, although I thought they were somewhere in there. I'm pretty sure they are. Um, so it's not data loading? Well, okay, I I'll have to. There they are. So, um, yeah, you have callbacks, uh, you have views. We could use this. Uh, in this case, and maybe we should, but for now I'll just do it manually in the resolver. Um, when should you use one versus use another? So the main use case for actually uh, uh, these callbacks and views is when you want to modify an existing resolver, like uh, the post resolver, for example, because you're extending the uh, forum example. And uh, or you could imagine maybe you know using. Uh, extending the categories um, uh, resolver if you're using the categories package. So you get the idea. The idea is you can't modify the code of the resolver directly, so you modify it through uh, parameter callbacks and views. Now in this case we can modify the resolver because we are writing it from scratch, so um, that's why you know I'm just writing it here. Maybe in the future it will make sense to have this resolver use the default resolvers. Maybe there's stuff in there that we want to reuse, like uh, restrict viewable fields, but so like yeah, if we did this, we would um, use the parameter callbacks and so on maybe, so we can just keep using the default. But again, for now, let's not worry about that. Let's just write our code you know, in a normal way and then maybe later refactor it to be more uh, Vulkan-y. Um, yeah, another thing is I, I want I might end up working on this with other people, um, so you know in those cases it's always good to stick closer to like s a standard coding pattern rather than go too much in the weeds of uh, Vulkan specific APIs. So back to our code. Um, if terms dot filters, what do we do? We want to modify the selector, and we are gonna want to only show um, rooms so let's bring up our schema rooms who have these all of these in their amenities so now I need to check the mongo docs Do I think we want dollar in? Um, so this is like so it's a document whose field holds an array that contains at least one element. So we want all element, all elements. Um, is there? So we could use an and operator. I'm just wondering if there isn't like uh okay let's ask stack overflow oh there is all actually is that it I think that's what we're looking for. So selector.amenities equals all. And then this will be our terms.filters. 
right? Let, let's see what we get. So this is our uh, Mongo selector. So at the very least, we want to see if uh, this gets updated with the correct syntax. And we would also expect yeah, zero returns. Um, okay, now to, to test that this is working, we need to find... Um, okay, so this one has... So you know what? I'm gonna... Oh, I'm not signed in. Let me... I'm going to edit this and give it an amenity, amenity that no other room has. I think it's the one, only one with a fireplace. Oh, room type is required. Okay, yeah. Um, room type, where is room type? Okay. Okay, so this one has a fireplace. So Um, although we, oh yeah, okay, sorry, it's it's not, uh, this one is not in that section of the map, this one is, so, you know what, we'll also give it a fireplace, and a room type, forgot about that, go back, right, so, if our thing is working, if once we select fireplace, only this listing should remain. Okay, so it's not working, but we have a useful error. All needs an array. And okay, that makes sense because since there is only one, uh, one filter it's being created as a string and not as an array so I actually um, handle that problem here with this line of code so we, we are gonna we're gonna do the same thing in the resolver um, so if if uh, terms dot filters is an array okay if it's not an array we wrap it in one and this way this will always be an array okay so amenities all null why is that because Yes, this should be terms. Yep. Awesome. Now, if we want a fireplace and an iron, we get zero. And let's, uh, let's add a fireplace to another room. So this one. Okay, and uh, air conditioning, why not? Let's go back, search. Now I only have this one because why? Okay, yeah, I wasn't in the right section of the map. And then what the other thing I wanted was an air conditioning uh, unit and that works, perfect. So our filters are working. Now in my uh, mockup, I have a lot more filters, but you know what? I'll probably leave that for later. Um, I mean, the current filters are a proof of concept. Uh, we can think about this stuff later. It will probably follow a very similar pattern. And this shouldn't be too problematic. Maybe, maybe the price range will need to implement some kind of custom slider thing um but yeah 
for now let, let's leave it at this and talk about a little bit about uh, building an admin section for our app. Now uh, there's already a, an admin dashboard at slash admin which we don't have because we didn't load it so let's do this add the admin package to the app now sometimes when I've when I add package uh, it will give you an error and I'm not sure why that happens because the admin package definitely exists but an easy way to fix this is to nuke your versions file and then try again this will just force Meteor to recalculate the versions for all packages and uh, usually that does the trick yeah so it found it this time I don't know why so the admin package that's available by default um, is an admin dashboard for users and there you have it um, you can edit an account and that, that's about it right now so well I guess one thing we could do that would be pretty neat let's let's augment that admin dashboard before we do anything else so if you look in the post uh, package there's actually an admin section mnjs file where we are extending the uh, the admin uh, dashboard with some extra properties and also some extra columns so um, I I'm gonna copy this and let's call it uh, adminjs as well and let's import it so uh, first we'll want to extend well so we want to extend the user's admin fragment to give it access to new data so for the post package we want to give it access to a user's posts here here we'll want to um, give it access to a user's rooms bookings and and um, reviews no, five latest of each and um, so we want to specify a fragment um, okay let's call it rooms item fragment and we don't actually have that fragment yet because I, I'm not using fragments so the reason I'm not using fragments is because uh, Vulkan can now you know guess a fragment so in the uh, with list where you would usually have a fragment passed as uh, an option you can also default to a default fragment which is basically just everything so if you don't pass a fragment Vulkan will try querying for as much data as it can and that's what we're doing here but sooner or later we'll do we do need fragments so let's create one um, it's gonna be so import register fragment from core and register fragment we'll call it rooms item fragment and um, You know, I, I like copying and pasting stuff just to make sure I, I don't make dumb syntax mistakes. And so now we're gonna list all the the properties. Do we need type name? I don't think we need that. Type um, so room Yeah, we're just gonna list out all of this so do we need create that probably not we do 
need user ID and user room type we want this property type so you can see why uh, having default fragments that can just uh, get all of this for you is useful um, maybe I should try can I use that here so maybe I can actually um, yeah that should work well it's not registering the fragment though It might be worth uh, refactoring this a bit so that it registers the default fragment as a regular fragment that you can use anywhere else. So in this case, it would look something like, yeah, collection name default fragment. So like this, rooms default fragment, bookings. Okay, let, let's do this. And then uh, reviews default fragment. And um, so where can we do that? Maybe um, So when somebody creates a collection Okay, okay, let, let's see if this works. So um So once somebody, so we will uh, split this in two, I guess. Um, So this still does the same thing as before, but now we also have access to this, which will uh, import So what we want to do is when the collection is created, we'll register So actually I also need register fragment Um, and I guess collection let's see and then if uh, this worked all right, then this should, so we'll comment this out, but we should get our uh, room booking and review, reviews for each user. I, I would be surprised if this works on the first try. Uh, I kind of get scared when I don't see any errors. I'm in users list, um, results, these, these would be the users. Uh, okay. So no, it's not working yet. Uh, why isn't it, is it not working? Maybe, so I am importing admin, okay. So I'm gonna go into my shell and um, I 
I guess we need to um yeah that that's not gonna work um trying to think what the best way would be to inspect that fragment so let's um, oh actually yeah we have it here okay cool just trying to think to find the um, Oh yeah, get fragment text. Is there a get fragment text? No, there's no get fragment text. That was a suggestion from chat. There's that get default fragment text. Um, but yeah, that right now I'm trying to see if the default fragment is getting added to. Um, to the users users admin fragment so I guess we, we can test this first okay so let's make sure that get default fragment text works although we are not exporting our rooms collection so we cannot do that oh that's that's getting complex but uh, let, let me just see um, where okay yeah that's what I was looking for so user is admin on user, it has all this stuff. It definitely doesn't have the, the things we were adding. So let's see. Um, let me make sure that this is yeah being loaded. Well, maybe it's not. Yeah, I, I had a problem last time with um, file changes not being detected by Meteor. I felt it was maybe because um, of the stream, like that was slowing things down somehow. Um, and it does seem like it's not logging anything out. So let, let's restart. Okay, yeah, so yes, we don't want that. So it does seem that we were having a problem. We are having a problem with uh, file uh, update, which sucks. I don't want to have to <laughs> stop and restart the app every time. It's slow enough as it is usually. So this has never happened to me uh, like at the time where I'm not streaming. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Cannot read property fragment object of undefined uh, 41. So why would that be? So maybe that is uh, the, the default fragment is not getting registered properly. Um, Oh yeah, I, I'm, I need to pass it a name, right? Oh no, actually just the text. Okay, 
My bad. Ah, uh, yeah, so. So, okay, let, I guess, let's start with this. Okay, reduce default fragment. Okay, yeah, that's the problem. It needs to be capitalized. Um, so collection. So when I run a get default fragment text here, collection name is using the underscore name property, which here will um, So if we use collection name, that would be capitalized. I guess, hmm, underscore name is always gonna be, yeah. Okay. Let's see if this works better. Okay, so these fragments are now created, which is good, like just generally, because uh, we might uh, need to use them somewhere else, and this makes it easier. And now, um, cannot query. Okay, that that makes sense because we haven't created these uh, these fields yet. So I can remove this. So uh, rooms, bookings, and reviews uh, don't exist. And we are going to create them as custom fields on the user's um, schema. So users add field. This can take an array. And uh, it's going to be field name. So rooms field schema. So um, Basically, the only thing we are interested in is the resolve as property, because this is a field that will only exist in the API, in the GraphQL API. It won't exist in the database. And uh, how do we set resolve as? So first we set a field name, which will be uh, rooms. We set a type, which will be an array of, uh, of a room, array of rooms and a resolver function which so um i'm gonna yeah let's look at this so yeah we do need optional true we need these two probably So someone is asking where they can see the current state of the project code. Yes, that's a good um, good question. So um, it's on my own personal uh, GitHub because the reason why is because it's still a work in progress. So I didn't want to make it like an official uh, Vulkan repo, but it's right here. I'll paste it in chat and you can find it at github.com slash sasha g slash zans room. So I guess if I'm uh, giving out the the URL, I'll, uh, I'll push right now. So it's up to date. Uh, let, let's commit all of this except for the admin stuff. Um, also, I'm not going to... Well, okay, I guess I can... Yeah, I'll have to come back later to port my changes to the main Vulkan repo. So this is not a super convenient workflow, but uh, for now, I'm just, you know, this is a separate repo. I'm just making my changes here. So anyway, working on uh, or finishing filters for now. And um, I'm working on the, the val branch just to 
stay uh, in sync with the main Vulkan.js devil branch. Okay, cool. So uh, you can you can uh, look at that. You can especially look at the code for the Zen's room package. Uh, but you know this will get cleaned up sooner or later and become like an, an actual example in the main Vulkan repo. So this is kind of temporary, I guess. Anyway, back to our app. Uh, we didn't have our custom field, so I was looking at the uh, post here. Let's copy this. Oh, actually, the arguments are uh, also useful because uh, this GraphQL field does take arguments, so we'll uh, specify default arguments. Copy the resolver. So it takes user, uh, limit, current user, user, we don't need post, but we do need rooms. And what do we want to return? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. And uh, restrict document field, so viewable rooms, restricted rooms. Again, rooms. Uh, now there is no rooms dot check access, so um, we'll we'll just do this for now. So the idea behind a check access is when some documents are off limits to some users. So this might be, in our case, a room that hasn't been published yet. But for now, you know, that should do the trick. So this is rooms. Uh, fill name, fill schema, yeah. I think we might need type, even though we're not using like simple schema validation or anything, but it might complain if we don't have it. So we need to do the same exact thing for the other two. So uh, uh, bookings and reviews, except we'll change this to uh, booking Um, and then change this as well. And then review here, reviews, views, reviews, reviews. Okay, so we have our three custom fields on the user object, reviews, bookings, and rooms, which do not need to exist in the database. Uh, we are only interested in their resolver and having them resolve into an array on the client. And so it looks like we don't have any errors anymore. Let's inspect to see if our, if we have that uh, React data. Um, admin users list, results. And we have a rooms property with all the rooms properties on it. We have reviews with everything on it. And we have bookings. Yep. Success. Now, the last thing we need to do is actually display all that information. So I'm going to go back here to my admin and uh, add three columns. Um, again, rooms, uh, bookings, and reviews. Order, uh, maybe let's say it's 50, 60, 70. This is the order, like in the order of the column in the table. And of course, admin users, rooms, 
bookings. We are getting their reviews. And where are we going to import them from? You know, they don't exist yet, but they will soon. So we'll import them from, um, let's go back one level, components, admin, admin users rooms, bookings, views. And again, for the actual component, I'm just going to look at what I did for posts. So components, admin users post. admin users rooms and um, if user has rooms then map it to so room room ID link to well uh, I guess we don't have the uh, a rooms dot get link function so we'll just do this And then room dot name, and that's it. Well, do we need rooms? I don't think we do. And that's all we need. Same thing for admin users bookings and admin users reviews. Um, so this time it, it will be bookings. Uh, let's check if it's... No, it's singular, so not bookings, but booking. Place this. A booking doesn't have a name, but it has a... Start and end dates. So we'll use that and then reviews so key is a review.id review here review there's not even a route for reviews yet but you know there might be one in the future and then review think it's comment and um, uh, actually I think I might already have something to trim yeah and let's trim the review to uh, the first I don't know 15 words Cool, and save our uh, admin JS file. Now let's see what happens. So we do not have our uh, extra columns and that could be because of that same bug from earlier where things were not updating. So I'm gonna restart. In the meantime, I'm also going to remove that uh, console.log that I put in uh, wherever that was. I think it was here. <laughs> so we might not need the fragments just yet. Hey, what do you know? So it works. I mean, it, okay, it looks ugly, but that's the feature we wanted, right? So we have a link to the user's rooms, the, the bookings created by the user, and you know, that's not gonna work yet, but it will eventually. 
Um, if you wanted to paginate this, it would be a bit tricky. It's not really possible right now. So what I would probably do is like add a, a link here that goes to the user's profile. So you only show like the, the five latest um, rooms or bookings, but you can see more on their profile. In practice though, I mean, at least for this use case, a user is not going to have that many um, rooms and bookings and so on, you know, and you probably only want to see the, the latest anyway. Um, you know, we can improve this. Maybe we should sort this by date. Um, of course, improve the way these are displayed. But, you know, it's definitely a good start. It's useful at least. Of course, you know, change the dates, use moment to format them. I'll do all of that later. Now, another thing I wanted to do, but I didn't quite have time to do it today is make actual uh, separate dashboards that just show you all bookings, all reviews, all rooms. So similar to this, but uh, for the other collections, uh, maybe I'll do it next time or maybe I'll do it by myself. It's not super complicated. Um, you know, here in the, this version, I'm just using the, the card component. That's that's literally all the code for, for that view. So um, just looping over the results and then showing the card and then, uh, you know, wrapping this with the proper higher order components. But we can think about improving this, maybe using a table like the admin thing. Then I'm starting to think maybe I need like some kind of card component but in a table form, so a table component that comes uh, with the search and stuff and sort maybe. So that could be pretty cool actually. And then that might be a good topic for next time, but we'll see. Um, at least I think this was a good session. We covered a bunch of stuff. And uh, yeah, hope to see you next time for whatever comes next. Thanks.